Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I bring you guys Math Mech G Golem the deck, or G Golem Math Mech, whichever one you prefer. Uh, these cards look insanely great. Uh, no joke, uh, these definitely have the potential to put Math Mech back on the map. Uh, this deck definitely fell from the wayside when Tier 11 became Tier 0, and Bistids became a thing because, hey, everyone playing DD Crow is not great. Especially when uh, your Sigma's a light and uh, they can just uh, magnum mood it. So it isn't the greatest. But uh, I definitely think the G Golem cards definitely rocketed his card up in strength. And uh, they definitely have the potential to push this deck forever. Now, this is just a first time build. There is definitely more potential of this deck the more to come. The more testing we do, the more cards that come out. But uh, the G Golems are crazy. Uh, this guy himself, G Golem Rockhammer is like a custom card this guy is stupid but uh let's just go straight into this so first things first you don't know the g golems we got the token cards before the actual archetype which i think is hysterical so if you don't know what the token was i think it came out of a astral pack not an astral pack uh what's the packs that we get in tournaments um I'm trying to think of the name is just give me one second to pull it out do 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 they came out in, I, I forget what the packs are called, but these are the tokens. We got the tokens for this archetype before we actually got Rockhammer, which is pretty insane to me. But hey, we do have the tokens now, and uh, here they are in their glory. Everyone thought these were like Nibiru tokens, and then they read G Golem, and they're like, what the fuck is a G Golem? Well, here we are. Here's the G Golems, and uh, they're pretty insane. So let's just go straight into this. So, first things first, we played three G Golem Rockhammer. You just want to see this guy in hand. This guy is link three on cracked. This guy's stupid. So, uh, first things first, is 1800, 2400 defense, level six. Um, his stats aren't the greatest, but hey, it doesn't matter because he has a way to summon himself onto the field. He's not a special summon, sadly, but he's still pretty, pretty good. So, basically, what he does is a discard one Cybers monster, or discard any monster. Oh, it has to be a Cybers, it has to be a Cybers. And then you lowered his level by four, basically, so you can normal summon him. And then you can tribute him on the field, spell summon three tokens, you're locked into Cybers for the rest of the turn. But uh, he just generates three tokens for free. And the G Gold cards in the links are just free to link free. So these guys are just a really, really powerhouse card. That since Mathmex don't really use their normal summon anyway, I think our only normal summon was Diameter. This card is just a home state deck. The only issue with this card is that it's a level six, so we can't search it with Sonnet Mining. But we do have ways to get to this card, and one of those ways is three G Golem Pebble Dog. Pebble Dog is another really really good card. Uh, this card I'm still wrapping my head around. Uh, this guy is a lot more simpler than him. But uh, G Golem Pebble Dog basically says when this card is normal spell summon, add to your hand or spell summon one G Golem Pebble Dog from your deck. And also, you can't spell summon the rest of the turn except Cyber's Monsters, which is fine. The other part about him is that when this card is sent from the hand to grave, uh, basically to add one G Golem card from your deck to your hand, which means add this guy to hand or your G Golem spell to hand, which is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, this card's really, really good. It's good to pitch off side at mining because it's not a minus one. Only issue is, is that getting this guy picked is the only way through side at mining. Uh, there's not really another way to do it. Uh, we used to play Unicorn in order to just pitch, in order to uh, discard this guy and then get the effect. The issue with Unicorn is that you gotta pitch something and you gotta bounce something, and doing it at turn one isn't the greatest. So, yeah, this guy's cool, but we need more Cybers is that discard for effect. Uh, this guy is still really, really good at card. And uh, we got to figure out how to use him. Uh, next, we talk about our Math Max. We play three Circular. Circular is an amazing card. Uh, we all know what this guy does. Basically, just reveal this guy's hand, summon him, send a Math Max to Grave. And then when a Math Max is summoned onto the field, add a Math Max, I believe, spell a trap directly from the deck, which is just really, really stupid. Uh, he's a plus. He's just a free rank four, a link two. This guy has everything you want. He's just a really, really great card. Definitely put Math Mechs on the map. And then Bistids kind of took this deck off the map. And now we're going to say, hey, let's put it back on the map with these G Golem cards. Uh, next, we play two Sigma. Sigma is a two of. It used to be a three of in my builds, but 
you definitely don't want to see too many of these guys in hand and not to mention circular just gonna send sigma so you don't want to have circular and sigma in the same hand and uh sigma is just a really really good card play two of it because you do play one copy of desire so we don't want to banish it and just in case our opponent dd grows it we just have another in rotation uh this is just backup number two you're only going to resolve its effect once uh but basically well not once but you're only use once effect per turn so basically when this card's in your hand or on in your graveyard you can just spell someone onto the field if you control math mech which is pretty pretty insane a really good extender and overall great card now i'll talk over our one o's which is the one math mech diameter a one math mech subtraction and i am still playing the one math mech addition just because these guys are just free extenders uh basically addition says target one face of monster uh, on the field can't spell some of the rest of the turn for the extra except cybers monsters and then basically hey uh you're just a free extender that monster gains a thousand attack and then subtraction minus is a thousand attack whatever you target but special summons itself also locks it in cybers and then diameter is just hey when this card is normal summoned target one level four cybers in your graveyard and then special summon it which is pretty pretty solid and that is it for the math mech lineup in the g golem lineup now let's talk about the extra just generically good cards i'm gonna move these tokens away uh generically good cards you are playing three parallel c because parallel c is still amazing just a really really good card in general uh, another card that we are playing is three micro code talker uh this card is also a really really amazing card just says hey uh let's just get our signet trap why wouldn't we play this not to mention it helps us make code talkers losing him as material from hand which is also fantastic so Parallel C, great card. Micro Code Talker, great card. Now we talk about our hand traps. Uh, since we were locked into Cybers multiple times in this deck, because these guys lock us out, we are playing the three DD Crow and the three Effect Veiler. So we had to play, we can't play Bistits in this deck anymore. Well, we never really could, honestly. But the idea with the Bistits was that they're, hey, they're just Link Fodder, right? But the issue is we're locked into Cybers a lot. And they're not cybers, they're dragons, I believe. So or beast. I, I don't actually know what the bistits are. But uh, basically DD Crows and Effect Veilers is our best way to go. Uh, if you really are going against tier, you can switch out these effect veilers for uh ghost mourners. But I just like effect veiler because both DD Crow and Effect Veiler are not once per turns. So if you have multiple of these in hand, you can still keep activating them, which is pretty pretty solid. And then finally for our spells. We are playing three Dark Ruler no more. Uh, this could be triple tack, honestly. Uh, if you want a more going first option, I just feel like the format's so toxic the way it is. You just need Dark Ruler in the main deck still. Uh, this is a really, really powerful card just to shut off your opponent. I just feel like main decking it is just essential at this point. Um, if you're going second and your opponent's playing Flunder, you gotta Dark Ruler them. You just have to. And uh, hope that you have side deck the right cards in order to stop them from just popping off even further but if you're going against flunder and they want to die row and they didn't break you're already in a bad situation but uh hey well, next card we got three sun at mining sun at mining is amazing and we got better because again we can pitch g golem pebble dog in order to add to our hand a golem monster or golem card which is pretty pretty sick uh next you're also playing three small world small world we've always played in this deck just because we want to get the circular but now we also want to get to G Golem Rock Hammer. Now this guy is a minus. Uh, Small World has always been a minus. So minusing yourself to minus yourself isn't the greatest. But sometimes your hands aren't the greatest. Sometimes you might just have multiple hand traps. And you might need a Small World your way out of this. Now we go on to our one of spells. Which we play one Desires. Because hey, Desires is good. But we don't want to banish too much. The one called by the Grave. Because hey, we want to stop hand traps ourselves. The one Mathemac Edition, because it's a Reborn that we can search. Uh, our newest card we got, which is our final spell, Gravity Balance. So this card's interesting. I kind of want to cut it, honestly, but it's not bad. Basically, it targets two Earth monsters and with the same name that are banished or engraved. Spells them both in defense position, uh, but negate their effects and change their attack to zero, but also destroy them during the end phase. And if a G-Golem card what you control is destroyed, uh, would be destroyed by battle, or opponent's card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So this card has potential. The idea in the combo is that it, you already have this guy in hand, or you have a way to get to him with Small World, and you use Sign of Mind pitching the dog, get this card, have two dogs in rotation, activate Gravity Balance, it's a free link two fodder. 
I don't know how I like about it. I might just cut this card, honestly. Um, but I'm still debating on it. Gravity balance is really, really interesting. It just the issue that's to target two Earths of the same name is really, really tough about it. And then finally, we do play for our trap cards: the one Sinek Conflict and the one Mathmex Circa uh, Super Factorial. Uh, this card does suck against other matchups like Tier Elements, but hey, they're already plusing Infinity on us. We just sometimes we just gotta snipe cards, and hopefully that's enough. Uh, we definitely probably side us out in the tier mirrors and in tier matchups, but against like flu and against other decks like Splite, this card is a blowout card. So we're still playing it. Really, really good card. And that is it for the main deck. I hope you all enjoy. Let's go straight into the extra deck. All right, so now I'm trying to talk about the extra deck, which will be nice and quick. We are playing the one Axis Code Talker because Axis Code Togarker does win this game. Why wouldn't we play this card? We're also playing one Mech Knight Avermax. I'm probably expecting why are we playing this card? Well, for two reasons. One, this guy, which we'll get into. And also, he's not bad to make with IP Masquerade because him making him unkillable by card effects and not able to be killed by battle is pretty, pretty solid. Not to mention his link arrows are very advantageous for us. So I really like Avermax, really, really good card. And uh, this guy just gets better in his deck. So we are playing him as our other Link 4. Now, I'm not playing the other Link 4 for this archetype. Just because we didn't have space for it. And sometimes you don't have access to the G Golem cards. So I just felt like I cut the G Golems in the extra deck as little as possible. Because these cards are really, really cool and really, really strong. But sometimes you won't have access to the big guy. And if you don't have access to the big guy, I still want to end on a board. You know what I mean? So we are playing the one G Golem Invalid Domain. Now this guy is stupid. Uh, anything co-linked to him is unaffected by monster effects on your, on your opponent's field. Also, all monsters your opponent controls must target this card for attack. By the way, he's really, really big, by the way. He gets really, really big. And then also, once a turn, you can discard one Cyrus monster. Draw one. And then if this card is co-linked, a uh, card is destroyed. And this card is negated. Uh, negate all cards on the field. So you're probably wondering, what the fuck does that mean? Well, he has three effects, basically. One, everything co-linked to him is immune by card effects. Effect number two, when he dies by battle, he just dark rulers your entire opponent's field. And it's permanent. I mean, his third effect is once per turn, you can just discard a Cybers, draw one. Which is pretty, pretty great because you discard Pebble Dog. And guess what? Pebble Dog's going to trigger adding you that spell card, which is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, next, you are playing the one Transco Talker because, hey, reborning shit is nice. Not to mention he's an Earth. One Heat Soul because, hey, I like drawing cards. Update Jammer because, hey, uh, making a monster that attacks twice. Uh -huh, access code. Uh -huh. Mech Knight Avermax. It's pretty, pretty fucking swell. Uh, Splash Mage, because reborning cards is fantastic. Uh, Cyrus Wicked Witch, because sometimes we don't search our tuners, and this can search us tuners, which is pretty, pretty solid. Cards that we never talked about before, G Golem Crystal Heart, and G Golem Stubborn Miner. These cards are fantastic, but they're situational. Well, not situational, but they have to be done in Pacific Combo, if that makes sense. You can't just hard make these guys. So, this guy requires two Cyrus Monsters, he just says target Earth monster in a grave, reborn onto the field. And then I think he put a G Golem counter on this card. And once a turn for each G Golem card in this card, uh, you can make this card attack twice, which is pretty, pretty interesting. But it has zero attack. That doesn't matter though. The part is, is that you make this, link it to this, this reborns this. And then when this card is reborn from grave, this guy has the effect where basically uh, you can spell something from your grave and target one Earth monster in your graveyard and. Special summon it or just add it back to hand, which is pretty pretty solid really really good card Gets you some advantage back overall just great now We all talk about our last links We are playing the one pit eagle because some, we are still making the pit eagle lines IP Masquerina because IP Masquerina is great the one lingaribo for our last link because hey these cards are still killing the deck I didn't want to cut them out. I did cut the secure garden line uh, Not secure. Yeah, it's like the security card cards but I did feel like Pit Eagle because he's in the gate. Uh, Masquerade because Masquerade's ma insane. And Lingaribo is still really, really solid. And then finally, we are still playing the one Lapetition to loop our opponent for three. And then the one Math Mech alternate. Uh, uh, what's it called? The guy who just adds cards. You know what I'm talking about. He just adds a Math Mech. Which is pretty, pretty solid. 
And that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoy. I spent a combo video for this deck later today or tomorrow. So anyway, I hope you all enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>